Hi, my name is Virginia Lee. I received my Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering from Virginia Tech in 2013. Currently, I am pursuing my PhD at CPES and is advised by Dr. Chen Lee. My research focus includes high frequency control and modeling for point of load converter applications. Today, I will be talking about the improved V square constant on time control with state trajectory control functions. The performance of the microprocessors has steadily increased over the year due to Moore's law, but so has the power consumption. To power these microprocessors, power supplies are required to be faster with higher control bandwidth. A popular control method for this application is the constant on time control. This control compares an inductor current with the feedback loop information to control the on time. In the small signal model, the current loop is represented by the current source. The sideband effect of the current loop is represented by the R, E, and C elements. The sideband effect of the current loop creates a double pole where the Q value is fixed and its frequency varies with respect to the duty cycle. For duty cycles smaller than 0.5, the double pole is beyond the collision frequency and is negligible. Due to the moving double pole, it is easy to achieve a high bandwidth design with constant on time control. In recent years, the V square variation of the constant on time control has become very popular. The V square constant on time control directly compares the output voltage information with the feedback loop information to generate the on time. Taking a closer look at the output voltage information, it actually contains the inductor current, capacitor voltage, and output current information. By comparing the output impedance of the two control methods, it's clear that the V-square constant on time control has a lower output impedance to the help of the additional capacitor voltage and output current loop, and thus is a faster control method. Because the V-square constant on time control is very fast, it can lose control for a period of time during a low step of transient. During this time period, the conventional V-square constant on time control operates with fixed on time and fixed off time until the V-square control is able to recover. During this time period, undesirable readback can occur. Instead, if V-square constant on-time control is lost, the converter should be operating in the on stage until an optimal switching location, such that by switching off the on time at this instance, the converter transitions into steady state. And the readback issue can be avoided. This issue can be more clearly seen in the state plane. The x-axis of the state plane is normalized inductor current information, and the y-axis of the state plane is normalized output voltage information. The on and off trajectories are arcs of circular paths. The steady state operation of the converter is represented by the closed loop trajectory in the state plane. When a low step up transient occurs at T0, the trajectory diverges from the steady state loop to the low view reference. Then, multiple on and off trajectory paths will zigzag across the state plane until this trajectory is able to cross over U reference at TA. During this time period, a large undershoot can occur. Afterwards, a long off time trajectory intersects V reference at TB, where V square constant on time control is recovered. Finally, the trajectory will zigzag along V reference to the new steady state. Not only does the conventional V square constant on time control have multiple cycles, it can also result in a large uncontrollable time period, which results in a large readback and settling time. Instead of the conventional method, the proposed control uses the state plane trajectory to achieve the best transient possible. First, when the low step of transient occurs at T0, the trajectory will diverge from the steady state loop to below view reference. The converter will continue to follow the on-trajectory path, which crosses the output current axis at TC. At TC, the radius of the on trajectory is obtained to project the continued on trajectory circle. Also at TC, the inductor current equals the load current. Knowing this, the new steady state location can be approximated as the intersection of the V reference and the load current. Then the off trajectory path can be projected where the radius is approximated using V reference. Knowing the on and off trajectory paths, achieve the new steady state. The optimal switching location, TE, is the intersection of the two circles and can be achieved by creating a current limiting wall. This current limiting wall can be achieved using the capacitor current information. Implementation of the proposed state plane trajectory control is shown here, where on top of the conventional V-square constant on-time control, 
A detector is used to determine when low stop transient occurs. Then the capacitor information will be used to compare with the delta IX, which is obtained from the state plane as a current limiting wall, to generate PE and terminate the extended on time period. Afterwards, V squared constant on time control takes over and the converter goes back into steady state. So a simple analog implementation is realized to achieve the best transient response possible. Here we show a comparison of the V-square constant on time control with the proposed method. And we can see that for the same operation, the V-square constant on time control can have a very large undershoot and ringback, while the proposed state plane trajectory control has very reduced undershoot and no ringback as well as reduction in um, inductor current stress at 79. The hardware setup consists of two parts, the industry power stage and the external control board. The ADI DC2605A is selected as the demo board due to the ease of control modification and the onboard load transient capability. This allows us to easily test the transient performance of the proposed control. The proposed improved V-square constant on-time control with state plane trajectory control is achieved using the external control board. Output voltage from the power stage is delivered to the control board. The duty cycle is then generated and provided back to the power board. In this waveform, we can see the load step of transient of the proposed control and the capacitor current sensing network. Looking at the top two waveforms, the purple waveform is the actual capacitor current waveform, while the pink waveform is the sensed waveform. The two match very well during the steady state and during the transient. The bottom two waveforms are the low current waveform, shown in blue, and the inductor current waveform, showing yellow. From these waveform, an extended on time can be observed during the low step up transient. Afterwards, the inductor current settles into the steady state in one switching cycle. Let's take a closer look at the operation of the proposed control during the low step up transient. The blue waveform determines the beginning of the transient and the control switches from v square constant on-time control to the proposed control, and the on-time is extended. Then the yellow waveform determines the end of the extended on-time and the control switches back to the v square constant on-time control. The green waveform is the output voltage with minimum undershoot and no ringback. At the same time, the pink waveform is the inductor current, which settles into steady state in one switching cycle after the low step-up transient. That is all for my presentation today. Thank you for joining us. Please join me in the individual discussions after the technical highlights. Enjoy the rest of the conference.